Hi, my name is Ada Wells, and I am the owner of ProBalance Physical Therapy and Pilates. I'm a physical therapist and Pilates educator in the Bay Area. And what I'd like to do is introduce to you a great product called the Sayark Bench. And this was originally designed um, to be able to be placed into work um, break rooms for you know, the personnel to be able to get out of their desk seats, um, do a little stretch, and get back to work without having to get down um, on the floor to be fully clothed and it being a very comfortable position to do so. Um, what I have found in my world is that um, this has great potential to be placed in pro shops, at golf courses, um, also within training rooms, and even in people's homes. Um, it's very lightweight, so it's very easy to kind of move wherever you need to move it, but it's sturdy, so once you get on it, um, it's actually, you feel very secure um, on it. So what I'm gonna do is show you a few exercises that are a little more basic, um, that just, just, once again, just get a little bit of basic mobility in the upper back, and then I will go into a little bit more detail and um, demonstrate some exercises which are designed more for, um, that are related to the Pilates type exercises, which work on some core stability and flexibility in other areas of the body, um, so that you can actually see the potential of this great um, piece of equipment. All right, so what I'm gonna do is show you a few um, just simple exercises that most people can do. Um, if they um, are, say they're at work and they're fully clothed, and they're just very basic motions just to work on mobility of the upper back. The upper back is great um, to improve mobility because oftentimes when people have issues with um, neck, neck pain or low back pain, it's usually the part in the middle that's the problem. It's actually having decreased mobility in the thoracic spine or the middle part of the back and being overly tight into the chest musculature so that it pulls the whole posture forward and that can lead to several problems. So, I'm gonna show you um, just a basic mount and a couple of different um, exercises. Please keep in mind if you're somebody who has low bone density, if you've had a total hip replacement where you have um, range of motion precautions where you cannot bring your knee past 90 degrees, um, if you have any acute neck or low back um, pain, you probably wanna first discuss um, this device and, um, and with your physical therapist or doctor to make sure you have the correct um, way of mounting. I'll try to describe them um, as we go along. There are modifications for getting on there for people that do have um, those, those issues. Okay, so first of all, um, just the basic mount here. I'm gonna show you kind of a neutral spine mount. Now, one thing that you wanna keep in mind is if you are someone who's a little bit taller, um, you're gonna maybe be on this, this uh, be seated on this a little differently than someone who's shorter or somebody who even has um, a little bit of what we call kyphosis where you have that forward, um, kind of the forward head and the rounded shoulders. Because the problem is, is if you're here and you lean back, guess what, your head's gonna be dangling and that's not gonna be a very happy position for the neck. However, knowing that, it's good, this is a great exercise for that, but you'll wanna first get some pillows or get some, I, I sometimes get yoga blocks, um, something that you can place behind your head so your head isn't dangling um, beyond where the spine is actually um, trying to extend backwards, okay? So, um, so for me, I'm gonna go ahead and, I'm six feet tall, just for reference, um, and I'm gonna go ahead and, and first start with just a nice, um, just neutral mount. Now, in this posi particular position, because I'm bringing my hip past 90, if you're one of those people with a, a hip replacement that you can't bring that knee past 90 degrees, this is not the mount for you. I'll show you something in a moment. Um, if you're somebody who has low bone density, this would be a good mount for you, okay? So we're gonna keep the, the spine um, in a relatively neutral position, and I'm just gonna teeter-totter my body back, and I can feel myself make contact. And so from here, I can just go ahead and rest my foot down, I can bring the other to meet it, and I can take my hands and place them behind my head, and just go ahead and lower on down. Now, as I mentioned, if I'm one of those people that needed a little extra padding if that um, arc didn't quite hit me in the right place, or it was a little stiff, I could always take that little yoga block or little pillow and place it right behind my head and that's gonna actually give me uh, a comfortable position for my neck. For somebody that might have um, some neck issues going on, that may make a difference, okay? But this is gonna be a great exercise. Now, from here, what do I do with my arms? There's a few things. The most basic position is just placing your hands behind your back, uh, or sorry, behind your head and just doing kind of a butterfly stretch. Now, as we're doing this, we wanna keep in mind what's happening kind of at the lower part of the body. So here's a sneaky way to get your abdominals to fire. We wanna think about those ribs staying connected with the pelvis, like you have little bungee cords here holding them. If you, for some reason, like you let go of those bungee cords and you relax your abdominals, your, your, um, the lower angles of your ribs are gonna pop out 
And that rib flare creates extra pressure down the low back. So just by maintaining that little connection there, you actually engage your abdominals without thinking about that hard, um, that hard crunch motion. And that's a nice sneaky way to get those guys to fire. Okay, so I can start with just this butterfly stretch behind the head. Now from here, if I wanted to, I can actually bring my arms up toward the ceiling. And thinking about keeping the shoulders out of my ears, I'm going to do just a little unilateral, um, one arm at a time, going up and down. Okay, so it's kind of like you're doing a backstroke motion. And once again, I'm keeping in mind those lower ribs. As those arms go up overhead, the lower ribs are really going to want to pop and flare. And I'm going to just keep that little gentle amount of contraction in my abdominals to keep that connection of the lower ribs to the pelvis. Now from here, I can bring both of the arms up overhead. This takes a little bit more stability at the, at the lower abdominals. So if you feel any discomfort in your low back, I wouldn't take it back as far or just stick with a single arm version. But once again, I'm thinking about not shrugging my shoulders and my ears, but keeping them down and keeping everything long. All right, so I can do that motion. Now I can also do a little crisscross. Now just what's nice sometimes is just to come out into this position and just get that, that stretch in the pecs. Now, I don't want to just relax and have everything hanging here because now I just pop my ribs up and, and, and that doesn't give me as much of a benefit. So we're keeping that connection and we're allowing ourselves to lower the arms, but almost we're not completely letting go of the, of the shoulder. We're having to, to keep that shoulder, what we call congruent, in the socket so that your shoulder really is in a good position and you will actually feel the stretch where you should. Now from here I could do just a little clap so I can kind of open the arms and bring them together to a clapping position, okay? I could also crisscross them completely over, and I like to sort of, sort of crisscross, alternate which arm comes forward, and doing that motion, okay? So then on getting up, I oftentimes will just gently bring the, the head up, place your hand underneath one of your legs, and once again, just that little hinge up, get you there, and from that position, you can get up and move about and do whatever you need to do, okay? So that is one very basic exercise, um, series of exercises that you can do. It doesn't take very long. I mean, I, I walk through them a little bit slower, but you can do any one of them and just for a couple minutes, and that's going to actually um, really make your back feel um, like it's, it's gotten a little massage without having to do anything, and we've woken up your abdominal muscles. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is just show you some um, alternate exercises and mounts um, that you can do um, using the Sayark bench. So I'm going to start with um, just what, kind of a variation off of an exercise we call roll back reach um, in Pilates. And so from here, I'm going to start with my knees bent, arms in front. I'm going to take a breath in thinking about being long. As I exhale, I'm going to think about trying to touch each vertebrae down um, onto the lower part of this arc. Notice as I'm doing that, there's not a collapse occurring here. There's almost a resistance of length coming out the top of my head. And I maintain this length as I come down. I can extend out my legs if I want. And I can bring those arms right on up overhead. And if I wanted to, I could just maintain this for a few seconds because this is a really nice stretch. But I'm going to take a breath. And as I exhale, I'm going to sweep my arms around. I'm going to bring my head up and I'm going to bend, curling my body forward and stacking up tall. Now this particular exercise may not be appropriate for somebody that has low bone density because we are taking the spine into some flexion and that movement um, is not um, a movement we want to do um, if somebody has osteoporosis or osteopenia. But it is a really nice exercise if you're otherwise healthy and you just want to get a little bit of core control work as well as some spine mobility. Now I can actually do some various things with the arms. I can bring the arms directly overhead and bring them in that same overhead direction as I come forward, stacking up. I can also, if I want the more difficult version, I can bring the arms up overhead. And once I get up to the very top, I'm going to take a breath here. Exhale, keep those arms in line with my ears as I come up. That's going to take much more um, strength in the, um, in the abdominal muscles to be able to get up past um, that point. So that little rollback reach is a nice um, just way to work a little bit on core stability. All right, another very simple exercise we can do is just a stretch um, just for the side here. And this can be very easily done, um, once again, at the office. So I'm going to sit down. I'm going to just loop my leg here. And I'm going to straighten out the other uh, leg off to the side. And from here, I'm going to think about almost sort of reaching my ribs down and coming over and just getting that stretch to the side. 
So I want to have a sense of lengthening out through my entire, through my top leg, through my top arm, but watching that we don't get the scrunch, okay? So we keep that length in the shoulders. And if you have low bone density, this next variation, not for you, but if you don't have low bone density, just doing a little forward motion here feels great. And then you can do a little backward motion, but just watch that you don't fall off. And back to center, okay? And then we can bring the arm up to the ceiling, take a breath, exhale, bringing it all the way up. And we can get a counter stretch on that, which feels really nice. And we would do that on both sides. So that's a great way just to get a little bit of mobility. Once again, this might be great um, in that golf um, environment, or once again, just within, um, within the office, just to get that stretch and mobility in through the arms. So a very basic stretch we can do with the bench um, is, is just this little side stretch. We would call it the mermaid stretch in Pilates. Um, this is going to be a little bit modified because I'm sitting and I don't have my legs in a crisscross position. So I notice how I'm sitting at the apex. And the reason why I'm doing that is just creating a little bit more instability. So I have to work a little bit harder to maintain control through my trunk. So it's not just a stretch. It's actually a stretch with control. Okay, so I can put my, uh, my knees together bringing my arms out to the side. Now, if you have shorter arms, you may want to go over to the shorter side, coming over for that stretch, and kind of thinking about you're lifting your spine up and over, and then back up tall. Now, if you have longer arms, you can come over to the longer side or the shorter side, and back up. So, if you come over just to say one side, and you do your, all your stretches there, obviously turn your body around, and then go ahead and do that same stretch over here, coming over, getting that stretch. Or if you decided to do lo the long side, coming over here, getting the stretch from there. Now, I'm going to switch back over forward again. What's nice is that you can, I'm going to go to the long side, you can come over to just the side like you're in between a toaster slot, you don't want to get burnt. But then you can go ahead and you can rotate your body forward. Now, if you have low bone density, this variation right here would not be appropriate. Then you can come back up. You can think about reaching behind you and back up into a tall position. So once again, if you happen to use the shorter end, I have the long arms. You can see how I'm on the very edge here. We can go forward. We can go up, back to the side, and up tall. So that's just a really nice way. Once again, you've got to be able to hold on to what's happening here so that we don't have a lot of excessive shearing going on as you're, bringing the, if, as you're bringing the arms over to the side, making sure that we don't have the shift forward of the, of the ribs. So those ribs, kind of that rib ring state, the rib ring stays over the pelvic ring, and it stays like you're a slinky just going right over to the side. And that's going to give you the best stretch and the best amount of control um, as you're doing that stretch. Okay, and what I'd like to do now is show you uh, a stretch for the front of the hips. When, um, because the hip flexor muscles attach onto the front of the spine, if you've been sitting for a long period of time, say you've been at your desk, you've been sitting, commuting to work, the problem is, is those muscles become shortened. So then if you decide to do something like go for a run um, right after work, or you um, even just going from sit to stand, um, you might find that you might have a little bit of back pain, um, simply because when those are compressed and those are, or when those are shortened, it creates a little bit of compression in the spine. So this is a nice way to stretch. Now I'm going to, for my body height, once again I'm six feet tall, I'm going to come on to this side for the stretch. Now if you're a little bit shorter, you may want to first prep like having um, a little block or a little um, something to help you actually get up onto um, into the position we're going to get into. You'll see in a moment here. I'll, I'll put this little step down here just so you can see what would happen here. Okay, so I'm going to just take one, um, one leg and I'm going to hinge myself back so I start to roll back. And then I'm going to actually push my, my body back so that now I have, um, I have my, lower, uh, my lower spine is completely supported on the arc. So I don't want my tailbone or my sacrum to be too far over here because that's going to place a lot of stress on my back. I want to have it kind of right, so if the apex of the arc is right here, it's going to be from here on the down slope, okay? And so from that position, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to bring one leg up towards my chest, and I'm going to allow the other leg just to rest down. And you're going to see how that really opens up um, the hips on the side. So I can come in here and just get that stretch. Or if I wanted to, I could add a little bit of a hamstring stretch just by doing a little bit of an active pump with the other side. 
and this makes it um, a little bit more of, a, um, of an active motion. Okay, so keeping this knee in, I'm going to bring the other knee to my chest, allow the other one to lower down, maybe letting that settle for a few seconds before I decide to do anything um, additional. And then I can place that hand behind the knee and do a few little pumps up and down. Now this foot can be, I mean the leg can be up here. I happen to have um, enough hip mobility to bring this in closer. So either way is fine. And once again, you may find that you may need to scooch back a little bit um, simply so that your low back is a little bit more supported and that's gonna allow this to feel a little bit better for you, okay? Now, if you are wanting to get fancy here, um, you can go ahead and you can hold on. I usually just hold on to the bottom here and you can place your arms up, or your, sorry, your legs up towards the, the ceiling. And from here, you're gonna take, let's take my right leg, and I'm gonna reach up toward behind my, um, towards my head, back to the ceiling, and then bring it down, but making sure that I maintain this connection of my abdominals so that I don't have um, any excessive motion of the spine, okay? So I wanna keep that really stabilized. Okay, I can do the same on the other side, going up, down, and so here I'm getting a little bit of stretch in the hamstring on the way up. I'm getting a lot of stretch in the hamstring. And then on the way down, I have to really work my abdominal muscles, and my hip flexors get a little bit of work here as well, but it really it is more lower abdominal muscles. This is more core, okay? Then I could actually bring this into more of a V, or a little martini glass, okay? And if you wanna go margarita glass, go for it. All right, but I'm trying to see if I can not have my body so far down here, but to really keep that, um, that V as upright as I can, okay? And depending on how flexible you are, that may um, vary. And then from here, I can also even do some little patterns. And this is very much like what we would do in a Pilates class. Um, so once again, it's kind of nice that you don't have to be down on the floor to do this. Um, you can do this right um, from here. Um, if I want to get some stretch into the inner thighs, you can bring those legs out to the side into kind of a straddle motion and back up. And that actually feels great to get that stretch in. I can bend the knees, do that exact same stretch, and that's going to bring it a little closer in to the groin area. So um, many men need to get a little bit more stretch there um, to work on the hip mobility for golf, um, for any rotational sports. Okay. And then I can also do even like a helicopter motion to work a little bit on some integration of movement. So I can go into my little martini glass, into my straddle, into my martini glass, and then with some scissors we'll snip it around. And so just sort of doing this little windmill or helicopter type motion, and all the while I'm trying to maintain the stability at my abdominal region, okay? In terms of my dismount, I'm gonna wanna be careful on this that I don't place any additional stress on my back. So I'm gonna place my, um, my foot down, and from here, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use the other foot as a little, um, a little way just to kind of get my body upright, and then up onto um, an upright position. So that's a more advanced um, set of movements. Once again, different people's bodies may fit differently, um, and so depending on what your body is like, I would do this exercise um, under the supervision of a Pilates instructor um, or physical therapist, just simply because um, everybody's a little bit different. Okay, this next exercise, once again, a little bit more advanced. So um, this may be something that um, you would wanna do um, while being supervised by somebody, but it's a nice way to get some strength in through the upper, um, the upper back and um, also just into the entire um, back side of the body. So we're gonna go into a prone position or face down on here, and I'm gonna place the arc just underneath the pelvis, okay? So I, I might have to play around with exactly the best, the best position. But from here, um, if I wanted to first just work on kind of strengthening some of the lower, um, lower back muscles and the glutes, I can start out with just a little, um, a little reach and length out through my legs. Now, as I'm doing this, I am, I'm trying to maintain as much length as I can into the lumbar spine, okay? I don't want to see a lot of crunchiness here. I, I don't want to see things moving in the pelvis. We want to keep that pelvis stable, but movement at the hip joint. This is going to be great 
um, for any athlete or once again anybody who spends way too much time sitting. Okay? It's kind of like a little small um, swimmer motion. Okay? From here you could actually hold on with your arms at the edge and once again without having any movement at the low back if possible then just doing both legs at the same time. So this takes a considerable um, amount of stability at the core to be able to do this. All right, we could progress this by bringing the arms um, into just a, a straightened position and doing just a little lift one at a time. Okay, we can lift both arms at the same time, and these V's are great exercise. They're Superman's. They're great exercise for the shoulder girdle. Okay, we could actually also do kind of a hitchhiker motion. This is something we give a lot of our um, patients that have um, shoulder surgery shoulder rehab, okay, and even doing a little, a little Superman or a little Aquaman motion here, okay. So from here, I want to bring my arms, so I'm going to start with just the Aquaman. I'm going to bring them to my side seams, and I'm going to think about lifting up my upper body and then bringing it right back down. Now, you may, once again, you may need to kind of adjust your body on this one, reaching it up and back down. So while we're doing this, you're almost imagining this gaze of this bug that's crawling in front of you on the floor, and your head is sort of following your spine. So we don't see this large motion of your head and no movement in your spine. We should see this continuous motion of the nose, the head, the back of the throat, the middle back, and just keeping this length in through this part of your body. Now from here, we can bring those arms up overhead, we can bring them back down, and we can lower right back down. Okay. So we're going to come up, bring the arms up over, back down, and right back into our start position. Okay? And that's a really nice way to get some strength um, in the upper back. Now, if we want to work a little bit on um, just getting the full body in involved, I'm going to scoot my body back onto the apex. See if you can actually balance yourself here, and you can actually do a little swimmer. Okay? And you can breathe. Inhale, inhale, exhale, exhale. Just make sure you're doing some sort of breathing so that you're not um, holding your breath during this exercise. Okay, and we'll bring ourselves back down. And this is a great place to place our hands back here and get that big stretch at the end. Okay, so those are um, some great exercises for the back end. Um, like I said, a little more advanced. Uh, but definitely a great workout. All right, what I'm going to show you now are some great exercises for working on um, some hip stability. And once again, we're always working core here. So I'm going to sit on the, the little higher side of the arc. And I'm going to just allow this bottom leg to um, be bent. And I'm going to curl my body over the edge here. So this is very similar to that stretch that we did um, earlier, the side stretch. And by the way, this is a great position to do it as well. You'll feel the stretch a little differently. Okay. Now your hands, you can support your head um, right in your hands, or you can allow it to be down, or you can have a little pillow here. Any of those are fine. I'm just going to keep my, actually, you know what? I'm going to keep my um, shoulder here. This is going to make it a little bit more challenging. So making sure that my shoulder stays open. And now my headlights of my pelvis are facing straight ahead. It's like I have a little, a little uh, glass balanced on my side of my hip, and I'm just going to lift my leg just up, up to a parallel position and bring it back down. Okay, so try to see if you can get it to parallel. It's a lot harder than you think, okay? So I'm not looking to see that I get it up here and seeing all this excessive movement in my, in my pelvis. I'm trying to stay stable and long through that pelvis and almost reaching out long through the top of my head and out through my foot as I'm doing this motion, okay? Now we can keep it here and just try to do some little small pulses at the top. Now this definitely, you start feeling um, some of the muscles in the side of the hip. Okay, we can also bring the leg forward and then bring it back. And I can add a little bit of foot choreography. I'm going to flex my foot forward and I'm going to point it as it goes back. So this is just a nice way um, just to add a little bit of variation into it. I can do this with my leg bent. So I can do that running motion as well, coming forward and reaching back. And really that reaching back, that's where the movement, that's where the work occurs. You've got to keep the ribs and the pelvis connected so we don't arch the back at the end, okay? When we arch that back, you really don't get the benefit of this exercise. So this is going to be great to stretch out that quad a little bit if you are a runner, okay? 
Now, if you're a golfer, you need to work on your hip rotators. Okay, I'm going to keep the, the leg to my side here, and I'm going to rotate up, rotate down. And so just doing this little rotation exercise, when you do this a few times, you're going to start to feel the work occurring at your deep hip rotators. And these are going to be really important in the golf swing and, once again, any rotational sport. Okay? But all the while, make sure the rest of your spine stays up tall, stays long. And look how easy it is to just get up, switch sides to the other direction, and we can work on the other hip. Okay? So those are some great exercises um, for working on the hip musculature and also just working on having that control through the core while the leg is moving um, through space. Okay, as a more basic exercise that you can um, use the bench for, and you can do this for that matter using a chair, but um, I figured since we had the bench here, I'd show it to you. Um, I'm going to move this bench forward a little bit simply because I have long legs. And what you can do is you can actually just hinge down, and I'm, I'm just hinging like I'm going to sit into a chair, and just grabbing um, hold of the, of the arc or just the top of the. Um, the, the say arc bench here, and just getting that stretch and that openness through the spine, okay? From here, I'm going to keep my spine, if I, the best I can, in that neutral position and try to straighten and bend my knees. Now, if this is difficult for you and you lose your neutral spine, you may need to bring your, not quite go as far forward. For you, it may be in this position, okay? Um, keep in mind, I am in an inverted position. If you have glaucoma, if you have... Um, hypertension or um, any issues with um, gastric reflux, you may not like being in an inverted position, so um, I would not um, do that if you have any of those three. Okay, so from here, um, I can actually, I'm going to just go into that, um, that first, first position um, where I'm actually in a neutral spine. I'm going to hinge forward, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reach for the arc, okay? If I can, I'm going to try to straighten my legs. Take one leg and just reach it behind you and see if you can lift one leg behind you without that pelvis moving. So we're trying to keep the headlights of the pelvis facing straight ahead and we're trying to get that leg up as high as we can without getting this rotation of the pelvis. And we'll bring it back down. We'll try the other side. There's usually going to be a difference on, on um, one side versus the other, but what you should feel is on the standing leg. Now if you don't feel much here, come down into a bit more of a V position and you will feel um, the stretch much more in the standing leg. Okay, so those are um, a couple of nice, once again, a little more advanced um, stretches that you can do um, using the bench um, just as a, as a prop to be able to place your body in different positions to get the stretch in the lower body.